episode 12. I remember this time. Uh, winging it, Austin Platts, Brennan Duarte. I'm Dylan Corbett. Uh, you know how we like to do it. A very basic set, uh, mass list of topics here. And a good way to start. We were actually just talking about it in our production meeting that lasted 14 seconds. Um, favorite casino game. Austin sent me a very late night snap. That's usually dangerous, right? Um, but it was a good one. It was a good one. And it was that he hopped on. So for you gamblers, you gamblers, you go in a casino, it's one thing to play roulette. It's a whole different thing to hop on your uh, online books casino, right? And then play roulette, which it's rigged probably like 75, 25, not in your way. Uh, but Austin, you had one of the more improbable wins last night. Well, yeah, we actually went to the casino last night. What? You double dipped. <laughs> no, I, I didn't play on my phone or anything. Oh, okay. Jesus was, Christ. Yeah. All right. I misinterpreted that. No, yeah, I was actually there, which made it more electric. But I'm, I've always been a roulette guy. And I don't know, I vary from black to red. It's just how I'm feeling. But um, we were playing blackjack, and then I, I only had 15 bucks left. So right before I left, I threw it on green. You know, so, zero, double zero. What's the so double zero zero? Did you put it on both? Yeah, in between. Gotcha. And it pays out seventeen to one, and it hit. And it was like me and this other rando that put twenty five dollars on it, and we like freaked out. And it paid out like two hundred sixty bucks, and then I just left. <laughs> oh, you have to at that point. But dude, uh, the casino like ninety five percent of the time you go, you lose money. Because yes, welcome you, to my life. If you, I feel like even if you go up some, it's like, all right, I came here to fucking spend big. So you end up putting like all your money on red or black at the end, anyways. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, I, I had a very different story last night at the casino. Because um, I went with Austin, of okay. course, and got there, you know, feeling good, feeling lucky, was having some drinks before watching football. Before I walked in, I was like, all right, I'm going to throw $100 on red as soon as I get there. <laughs> Go to the ATM, withdraw the $100, put it on red, immediately lose. Oh, come on. What number was it? I, I don't even remember. Gotcha. And that just kind of set the tone for the night. We went to the blackjack table after that. I put $50 in, lost that in a matter of about 10 minutes. I, I don't know if I have ever had... I think I've gone to the casino probably 35 times in my life. Come and on. Realistically, I think I have walked out of there with more money once or twice. I always lose. It's a losing game. The house always wins. Um, I mean, I'm always playing roulette, blackjack. I probably prefer blackjack. Um, craps. I mean, my bachelor party, we had a squad of 20 plus. You guys had a table that almost drew the entire casino like towards you. It was incredible. I was jealous. I was at the one dollar blackjack table, just like, wait, you guys winning? Like, as the crowd's erupting. Um, so that's what I haven't gotten into. But what are some of the favorite casino games? Are those the three? Well, I was gonna say blackjack always gets you two because they got those two little circles at the top left and top right where, like, if you, you get have to the play them. You got to play them and like you never win them. And then the one time you do, you like freak out. But um, it's like a parlay, yeah. honestly. Yeah, it's like getting a parlay once every month. I like all the games, but I probably like roulette the most. And I mean, there's the nothing slots, like hitting no a one... zero. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Well, and a slot uh, too, a jackpot. Yeah. The slots, I feel like we never play the slots because I feel like you go there and like if you want to spend like five hours there and kill a day, you'll go yeah. sit at the slots and throw like quarters at it. But, I, you know, you do hear these stories of people winning like $100,000 on slots and you're like, well, I guess it does happen. Once so, I've walked by somebody and it's just like they're celebrating and it's like, how, how the hell do you win? But the demographic for that is like the crypt keeper's father my dad brennan's grandmother who's that, steady at the slots that that's what i was gonna say if you know me you know my grandma minnie dodd loves going to the casino and loves taking me with her and and i have a good time when i go with her because she'll right. generally give me like at least 20 or 40 bucks to go but my issue is she is i think she's 88 now 
she strictly plays slots. So I have to, I have to play them Sit with her. Sit there with her, right. And, and slots are just pretty boring. And she is also a very superstitious person. She'll make me put in like the, the bill a certain direction. When I'm hitting the <laughs> button, she'll make me wait a certain amount of seconds. And no matter what, I still lose. And she's like, oh, it's just these machines today. We got to go find another one. And then we go to another machine. The same thing happens. I lose money. Um, Wait a second. It's tough. Wait a second. I'm imagining, hold on. It's like a Sunday afternoon. You think it's just a casual 40 minutes with your grandma. And all of a sudden you are ceremoniously waiting five and a half minutes. You're looking at her. Mini, can I go yet? Can I pull the slot? Says, no, not yet, Brendan. Not not yet, Scooby. Um, my God, what's the longest you've been there? What's the most she's won while you've been with her? I she won like six hundred dollars one time off this like AC DC slot machine. It was pretty electric. <laughs> it's a classic. But one time I was with her for like two and a half hours because she doesn't drive. She doesn't have her license anymore. Um, I, I went and picked her up from her house. We went to the casino. We were there for about two and a half hours. And I was like, grandma, I I have to leave. Like I I cannot play slot machines anymore. I'm losing all my money. She's like, all right, honey. Well, I guess I'll just Uber home. Oh, come on. Stays there for like six to seven hours at a time and just gets a ride home. She'll either call her friend or call an Uber. It's pretty ridiculous. Instead of your drunk buddy at the casino, you're trying to drag him out of the casino into an Uber. It's your sober grandma at the penny slots. Correct. (laughs) She's about four foot nine, but ripping her away from those slots is a challenge. (laughs) But it's like, I think the time of day is funny too. It's like mid morning, early afternoon. Well, usually gets there around 11 a.m. Yeah. <laughs> Sharp. Did you say four foot nine? Is that legally a <laughs> little person? <laughs> Wait a second. Good I gosh. think realistically, she is four foot 11. All right. Like, I, I don't think she's legally allowed to have her driver's license because she's too short. I think my uncle everything? Dick just lost his license too, but it's because he has a glass eye and one eye. What? <laughs> True story. Um, could you imagine losing your license? But that's just a part of getting old, right? Like that's going to be uh, a sacrificing time. But shit, I think all the three of us love driving. Like that's an art for us. Yeah, absolutely. I, I don't know if I would like, I think once I get to the age where I can't drive, that's where I'm just kind of like, do I really like have any life left to live at this point? I, I hope that it never gets to that. Well, good thing video games are invented because I've been saying that since I was like 12. I was like, dude, I'll be playing MLB the show when I'm 90 years old. Just leave me be, you know. Dude, um, speaking of video games, I always viewed them as like, you know, only little kids play them. And I, I always thought, you know, you grow up once you like go to high school or, or no, college. Still me. <laughs> I feel like guys play them even like till they die you see like dads playing them and stuff like what is that i just bought nhl 21 i mean i have a problem i i love video games you're literally describing me um which is funny but wait a second speaking of hobbies here's something that's odd and actually odd maybe video games is odd you and joey joined a saxophone class come on okay this is sax in uh I think it's junior year. We wanted to just spice up our life a little bit and learn a new talent. <laughs> so we joined oh, the wait, saxophone in college, class. Right. Okay. Yeah, in college. And uh, the the class said, you know, beginners and experience, experienced people. So, like, we come to the class and he's like, oh, so, like, you guys don't know how to play at all? And Joey's like, no. He's like, oh, we've never had a beginner. We kind of just put that, you know, just to, like – be nice so we like sit down and just listen to all of them play on the first day and the teacher's like you guys should come out and get pizza with us later like this is so cool we've never done this so we like <laughs> it was a club and you thought it was tryouts for beginners so we had to have like our own little class one-on-one with the teacher and like we weren't even a part of the class the, re- the rest of the semester But it's funny because like Joey became tight with all the saxophonists at Mizzou and like started selling weed and shit. Of course, music (laughs) industry. Became their plug. Also, keep in mind throughout this process, I lived with both of them. 
and they would come home and practice saxophone on a Tuesday night <laughs> at the most inconvenient times just while you're like trying to sleep. Shrieking music, just complete terrible racket. Exactly. <laughs> we would only practice the night before our class because he would always like quiz us the next morning. And we'd like go upstairs and practice and then come down and perform for our roommates. They'd be like, just get the fuck out of our face. <laughs> also, Joey, you. if you're listening, I was way better at saxophone than you. Wow. Wow. That's a shot. I can't vouch for that. I don't even remember who was better or not, but I did you play I do remember that. Did you play an instrument, Brennan? Like at no. all early. Uh, I remember, so I brought that up because there was a time where, and I thought it was so arbitrary. Maybe it was a Connecticut high school or uh, middle school at the time, but they made you take either band, oh, like right. learning an instrument, <clears throat> excuse me, choir, or basically if you were just like always in ISS or always in trouble or you were just stupid, you were in like, instruments which was just tapping on a bongo, bongo drum no i i remember in elementary school fourth and fifth grade we had to do what was called strings where you had to choose between like violin cello, cello right something else Viola, I, so right? I played the violin those two years i was absolutely terrible at it uh but that was my short-lived music career other than the you know previously mentioned rap career i also rap had career right i was gonna say I did the violin too. And wow. like, I was pretty good at it, but like, you know, you have like one big concert at the end of the year. Um, and like, I Spring had the songs, concert, yeah. I had the songs out of order. So I started playing the wrong song and it totally threw me off. So I just fake played the entire performance. I was like, well, uh, no one noticed, but I was like, well, that whole semester was a wash. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait until we're all parents and we're going to see our kids. Yeah. You know, people are in the third grade view. People are cheering us like we just played the Beethoven symphony. And uh, all of a sudden, our kids are going to be there and we're going to just be hearing like insufficient racket. <laughs> um, the one thing I hated about the saxophone, Austin, maybe you hated this too. It's a reed instrument. So you'd have to constantly rep uh, replace the broken reeds. And it was the most shrieking sound ever if you had like a chipped reed, which we're all in like fifth grade at the time, which is different from you. But it's like, you know, it's like, Jesus Christ, you're not supplying these for us. It was an expensive instrument. Wait, so you played it? <laughs> I did too. Did I not mention that? No. Because uh, I had to take band. Uh, I, it was either the bongo drums, the choir, or I had to choose band when I was in. I was terrible. My God uh my brother ian corbett shout out he was a violin player too dude um, setting up the saxophone you have like three parts and then yeah you gotta right. lick the mead or whatever it's yeah, called the reed yeah terrible and terrible instrument quickly yeah it's so hard it's do you feel like though if you got good at the saxophone that would be one of the coolest instruments well have you heard of kenny g he's probably yeah. the most famous saxophonist i know and he's fantastic yes I feel like it'd be just like really easy to like play some jazz and, and serenade a, a girl. Different <laughs> time. I, I mean, seriously though, like, yeah, I mean, I, that's probably why we learned the sax like, you know, a couple of years ago was wh like, what are we going to be doing now? Still playing instruments or just playing auto tune diss tracks from Scooby on the beat. <laughs> Do you think uh, girls think the saxophone or the electric guitar is sexier? I think Electric girls, guitar. if if you pulled out a saxophone on a date, would think you're a psychopath. Uh, maybe I'm wrong about that. No, no, you're right. You're definitely right. I, I think piano and electric guitar, or just guitar in general, are probably the two best ones. There's only Acoustic only guitar is pretty solid, too. Yeah, a Guitar is just a solid instrument overall. I would give that the only one, right? Just like, what if, what if some dude on a date pulled out a flute? Or uh, the recorder and played hot cross buns. Yeah, harmonica. Is he getting laid? <laughs> we Absolutely we learned not. the we learned the flute or what did we learn in like second Harmon grade? Yeah, I mean everyone. I think it was like a fucking requirement to learn hot cross buns on the recorder. <laughs> I don't think I've ever played a, a recorder. Fun fact though, my grandpa, who I never met, apparently was a wizard at the accordion. Wow. Um, 
the thing where like it's like what is it like half piano half right harmonica. and keyboard yeah or, yeah uh, yeah i know what you're t- oh, it's, it's like, like it's uh, like a keyboard and it's like a wind organ organ or something yeah. and half pipes bagpipes zach kelly's irish roots i think zach kelly maybe believes that he could play the bagpipes but <laughs> that's another funny instrument dude speaking of instruments i literally i was trying to learn piano during quarantine and i bought this fucking like hundred dollar keyboard <laughs> wow visual <laughs> audience he has it and guess how many songs i've learned uh 20 zero what <laughs> oh. i learned one on christmas but i forgot how to play it yeah it's hard for me to like really sit down and learn something you know, uh, know. <laughs> the only one i would want for piano i think everyone has this a thousand miles vanessa carlton the most famous music video of her just, you know, moving through the streets of some poorly lit green room uh, <laughs> on a piano. Um, okay, let's stick with music. So I so I have this thing where it's like, uh, you know, every couple of weeks on a Friday or Saturday, how I stay up to date with hip hop where me and Brendan have been hip hop fans for Jesus Christ since we were bumping Juicy J in each of our cars when we were 16, etc. I've still stayed up to date with it. Brennan, I think you have as well. Um, I was listening to Playboy. So what I do is uh, every couple of weeks, I always check on Spotify, like hip hop albums, which come out and I go through each song. So obviously I'm a little more biased to artists I like, but even artists I've heard of kind of fuck with their music. I'll give them at least one minute if it's ass skip. And that's how I kind of go through the album uh, to kind of decide which songs I like. Playboy Cardi's album, which was like 24 songs. And Playboy Cardi, uh, when we were in college, had those bangers. Magnolia. What are some of those others? Um, he had a song with Lil Uzi Vert that killed Woke him. up like this. Yes, exactly. Um, and I'm listening. At, he had At Me, which came out, uh, M-E-H, a couple, a year and a half ago, maybe, which I loved. So he comes out with the album. First 15 songs, I'm like, what the fuck <laughs> is this? And I, I wanted to, uh, I just got an iPad and I'm getting an audio interface. So I'm going to be playing songs. I wanted to, uh, or playing music and sound bites. I wanted to play some snippets here, but uh, have you listened to it, Brendan? Some of it was whack. I ended up liking three songs solely because he has great beats. Yeah, he does have cool, interesting beats, but he, when he raps now, he sounds like he's like three years old. Yeah. Like he just kind of like squeals. that's exactly well put i was scrolling through twitter and i saw this tweet and the the tweet was like this playboy cardi song fits perfectly with mario kart and it was just a video uh, of a game clip of someone playing mario kart with the playboy cardi beat in the background and it was absolutely perfect because playboy cardi sounds like he's three or four years old going (laughs) along with this (laughs) e-rated Well, and that no TikTok, right? Where it's like you're cracked at Fortnite. Isn't that played by Cardi in the background, like the music filter for that? Is it? I don't know. <laughs> Shit. I have no idea. Are you still up to date with hip hop? Did you never get into it, Austin? Dude, like I said at the beginning of this podcast, what? I'm pretty musically illiterate. Like, I don't know shit about it. I just got Spotify like, like two years ago. Changes your life. So yeah. you tell me to name a song by Playboy Cardi. I can't do it. But, like, I'm sure I've heard them all, you know? Fair enough. Also, did you say you get your hip-hop music from, like, one new... Can you send me that? I'll literally break it down for you right now. You brought up Spotify. You hit Browse. Yeah. Type in, or not type in, click on Hip-Hop Genre, which is right on the top. And then I just go down to Albums, and I look at all the new albums that have been released. And if it's someone I like, it's it's albums and singles. So that's how I just kind of stay up to date. And then it's not like every, like I'll do it every couple of weeks because it's probably like four or five albums, just mass from every hip hop artist on Spotify. And then there's probably like one or two I like every week. Like there hasn't been a bit in a while. Brendan, how do you keep up to date with music? Um, I just follow like a lot of artists. Hot new hip hop on, on Twitter is great. Yeah, that's there, there are some like rap accounts or music accounts in general. But also just I, I follow a lot of artists on Instagram and Twitter and they'll, you know, promote their music a lot. Also, even just like 
I mean, I, I use Apple Music, um, but yeah, you're an Apple Music guy. I'm sure the same as with Spotify that they, you know, weekly put out um, the best, the hottest new songs for a certain genre, or you know, I'll even look at like the top 50 charts right. worldwide for any genre just to find new music. Sure. Um, in terms of TikToks, who had this? Uh, we've got tying knots TikToks and Nerf blasters. Am I sounding ignorant? What, how about sea shanties too? I just learned about that one today. <laughs> I don't know what I that did, is. Sea shanties is that the is that where the shit where they sing like pirates? <laughs> yeah, from, like the New York Times wrote about it today. That's how <laughs> I saw it. But it's and then uh, it was like after I saw these two guys just like doing a sea shanty chant in the car. Like, yeah, I, I, crazy I saw one. It was like they they were singing. It was basically like vulgar rap lyrics. But yeah, but in an old English like language. to the tune of the theme song from SpongeBob guy. If if you were to make him sing a rap song, that that's how it was uh, set up. It was it was right. pretty funny and pretty catchy. So I fuck with those. I, I'm a fan of those. Sure. I have literally no clue what you guys are talking about, but I was the person that put those. Okay, first of all, rope tying or knots have you ever seen those like they're the most simple speaking knots. of ships right yeah. <laughs> yeah they're the most simple knots and like they're, they look so useful and you're like if i had to tie a knot to save my life what would i go with you know because i feel like i only know one knot and it's like the one to tie your shoe <laughs> Yeah, no kidding. Like I'm trying, like being a Boy Scout, maybe. Like I don't know what situation I would need to tie a knot besides, as you said, the shoe. Well, you never know. Like I don't know if you're putting a boat at the low, like those arcs up to a dock or something. Sure. Yeah. But um, I was never a Boy Scout either, so I don't know. And then there's like these some of these knots were like you know something stuck under a rod, and they they like twist it in eight different formations, and then just pull it out. Like, I got to send you these things. They're crazy to watch. <laughs> I look forward to it. And then, like, I scroll down, and then you see, like, this boy or girl. I don't know which one it is. Like, wait, 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 wait. Before you go, is it Soapy Lightning? <laughs> no. Oh, well. <laughs> wait, maybe. I don't know. The, the, the girl who loves Nerf Blasters? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, yeah, continue. I see her talking about her favorite blasters and why, like, it's Nerf or Die. And, like... <laughs> She has like hundreds of videos strictly about Nerf guns and she like, it's literally her life. It's like, yeah, it's crazy. This, this girl, she enters like Nerf tournaments, which I didn't even know existed. And she has like the craziest collection of Nerf guns, like literally probably almost in the thousands of different Nerf guns that she has. She has like bazookas. She has snipers. She has full automatic. Jesus Christ. Guns. Keep an eye out for her in DC on Wednesday. <laughs> and um, she's like the happiest person ever. And she just gives advice for why certain Nerf guns are better than the others. It's, it's really, honestly, some wholesome content. I, I'm with you on that. I didn't realize Nerf blasters were still a thing, but I've always like had this fantasy of having like a crazy Nerf blaster like war, like obstacle course. I guess it's paintball too, but. Dude, don't no, when I was wrong. 11, I would have been all for that. Dude, if you gave us all Nerf guns right now, I mean, I'm sure having a, a war would be fun. Let's be honest. Um, but, Hold on. Wait a second. We got to touch on how, because that's fascinating to me, how TikTok just, it starts crazes. It starts trends. I just started following this guy who I can't not watch one of his videos. It's at Brit Golf Dad. It's this 78-year-old golf dude just teaching golf lessons in his backyard. He's wearing cardigans, and it's fascinating to me. I think I've seen that guy. <laughs> yeah, and, and to your point about how it starts crazes, nowadays, like, music, certain specific songs will just blow up. Yeah, that exactly. never would have blown up otherwise from artists that you've never heard. And like artists just get put on the map now because of TikTok. And it's honestly pretty cool. Dude, I just heard uh, a mashup of God, what's the Wiz Khalifa uh, uh, party every time? Did I totally fuck that up? Aaron's <laughs> been bumping it on his uh, Instagram live lately. But I, I was watching a TikTok of a, uh, a snowboarder in Switzerland basically just swifting through the streets of switzerland to a drake little baby verse 
<laughs> to that song, like the remix yeah. that w- Wiz Khalifa remixed off of, like I think some '70s song. Um, yeah, there are some really oh, the cool thrill, the well. thrill. Oh, the thrill. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Uh, wow, I'm really embarrassed about my interpretation of that song. <laughs> Yeah, even the musical genius didn't even know what you were talking about. <laughs> That's a great point. But yeah, um, the variety on TikTok is unreal. I mean, you'll see a hot girl dancing one time, and then you'll see some you'll guy like her, at, at on her profile, and she's 15, and you're like, God damn it, do I need to report myself right now? <laughs> Brennan, I was dying at your Instagram poll of uh, asking whether – uh austin should buy your drinks for uh helping help congrats on 10k tiktok followers yeah that one chick got me eight thousand followers but <laughs> me and brennan had that bet and i had to buy three of his drinks because he got like over 95 percent in the first 50 uh votes yeah the, the bet was the first 50 voters at least 48 of them had to vote yes that Austin would buy my drinks and it happened. So thank you to my Instagram voters. Yes. I'm going to shout out uh, Jake Poupard for voting. No, you're a douchebag. Wow. Shannon Stoffel also for voting. No, we're mm. no longer friends. Wow. Harsh words. Love you, Shannon. I, uh, I voted yes. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, I figured out, I had an epiphany the other day as the 10 minute mark uh, remaining in our zoom chat hits us. Um, I figured out the drinking scale. Let me know what you guys think. Um, so this is based on like you going out for the night, you know, say you like start drinking. Um, I don't know, like when you get off work a little five 30, you know, happy hour, five 30, six 30. Um, so this would range from like college to, and this obviously, obviously changes with tolerance, age, et cetera. But I think this is a solid average scale. Six beers throughout the course of a night of drinking, you are considered, do you guys have a guess? A keyword, a keyword, one word. Buzzed. Friend? Throughout the course of like an entire night? Six beers throughout the course of an entire night. What would you consider, not specifically yourself, the average person? So throughout the course of like a few hours, I'll say, yeah, I, I would say buzzed. That was my word, buzz. Okay. <laughs> uh, 12 drinks throughout the course of a night. Drunk. I, I would say, are we just looking for one specific keyword here? One word. I, I, I'm going to go with Austin again. I'm going to say drunk, yeah. God damn it, I need my sound bites here. Ding, ding, ding. Drunk. 18. I'm going to say blacked. Mm. I'm going to say hammered. Yes, it's hammered. <laughs> 24 is my pick for blacked. Hold on, 24? Yeah, well, it's Saturday. What? Not this Saturday. I mean, Jesus Christ, my mom listens to this. Um, but I think that's a good scale. Dude, if I had 18 drinks in one night, I'd be blacked probably. But think about it. But- you know, sometimes you're out and you're mixing. Like sometimes you'll have maybe a shot or two an hour mixed in with one beer, like time elapses you when you're getting up to that number. Um, but I, it, like, is that an accurate scale? Again, some people don't even touch that number, but we're not. Some I don't people. know. I, I feel like we're a friend group that probably drinks a lot more than other people. Yeah. So 24 is buzz for me. Listening to this uh, what? Uh, would not agree with that scale. Um, personally, I would say it's, it is close. I, I do think that, if I have 18 drinks, I'm going to be blacked. I'm going to be more than hammered. Well, that's why I like to keep it like light beer. Like, I'm not saying like, hey, go drink 20. Uh, first of all, I'm not saying any of this, but it's like, if you drink 24 Moscow mules, um, you're going to be a skeleton. Yeah. <gasps> yeah. Dylan, didn't you say you one time sat down, watched football and drank 24 beers in one day or something? 28. <laughs> um yeah it was a saturday um boston college was playing uh it was game day woke up 6 a.m tallied till the end uh one of my buddies i mean have you ever heard of this game um and this again you know it's just one of my buddies uh in college 
it, it's called Wade Boggs. I think it's taken from Always Sunny in Philadelphia. But we did that probably a handful of times in college where you literally have a white T-shirt and somebody sober is keeping track of everyone's drinks with a marker on a white T-shirt. My buddy was just literally like, imagine a pelican uh, just guzzling down alcohol. This was my buddy in college. And uh, I kid you not, he got to 44. There was 44 slashes on his fucking like goddamn white t-shirt and we were in disbelief. Well, well, that game gets its name because so Wade, Wade Boggs, Boggs had like, whoa, it's 70. Hall of right? Fame baseball player. Um, the, the story is, is that I think that his team was on a flight home from a baseball game and he killed a 30 rack <laughs> on the flight home, which is Different where that breed. game gets its name from. Um, who's the Andre the Giant? They said that he would literally drink like three yeah. thirties in one sitting and wouldn't even go pee. He'd just like crush them like they were shot. <laughs> that dude was literally a giant. Like, could yeah. you even imagine? He was, yeah, he was like over seven foot, over 350 pounds, too. Still Dylan, impressive. I know, I know you like the word uh, belligerent. How many Correct. drinks do you say belligerent is? Mm, that's a good the one. Past blacked or before blacked? I would say uh, I, that's got to be in between hammered and blacked. I would say that's got to be a 21 probably. <laughs> I'd agree. <laughs> um, as long as we agree on that, here's something people might be polarized on. When does it become no longer acceptable to have Christmas tree decorations up? Uh, I guess this goes with lights, etc. I've always heard New Year's, maybe give or take the year after, depending on how bad that uh, New Year's Day hangover is, right? Yeah, 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 I agree. I, I was the one who put this on the list because we still have our Christmas tree up. <laughs> um, I feel like having your Christmas lights up is much more of a sin to do longer because a lot of people can see it. A lot of people can drive by your house and see it. Um, lights are one thing, but like excessive decorations, like the people that go all out in front of their house too. I'm with you. Right. Uh, when I lived at my think, parents' house, we had a neighbor who used to keep them up till like legitimately the end of April. It's like and, a, a Christmas vacation or uh, whatever. Right. I think if we weren't getting kicked out of here, we'd literally just keep the tree up <laughs> till next Christmas because we're just so lazy. It's still going to be up <laughs> as the bulldozer is fucking uh, running <laughs> over. The one thing standing. Correct. Um, as we're running out of time here, uh, at least for the first part of our uh, Zoom chat, I do have one question. Maybe no one else caught this. I even forgot that I put it up here last night. Uh, just a call back to last week. Uh, did anyone catch the promo for Call Me Cat on Fox uh, coming soon? Jesus Christ. Uh, that's all I had there. We've got well, more. I did not catch it. I can only imagine, though. I, I I can't even I I wanted to look it up right now if someone wanted to filibuster, but it was basically just um I mean I can't even explain it to you. I want to look up this bio right now because it's gonna was be it like another movie. cop show or no? No, it was like a family like a man, sitcom, but like it had to be politically correct. And in this climate, it was the most um okay. Uh, all right, somebody get a sentence in here and set me up for what the bio is. I'm going to even get the glasses out for this one. Somebody talk here for maybe 30 seconds and then set me up for what the bio is for Call Me Cat coming soon. Uh, so we're filibustering. Okay, so speaking of cat movies, how about the Jason Derulo cats? Did we talk about that actually before? How like they spent millions and millions on it and like literally no one went and watched it. Yeah, it was just a complete bust. I'm going to, we have less than a minute here. Dylan, sure. what's the bio for Call Me Cat? I've got it. I'm ready. Uh, Call Me Cat follows a 39 year old single woman named Cat, K A T, who, quote, struggles every day against society and her mother to prove that you cannot have everything you want yet still be happy. After leaving her job as a professor at the University of Louisville, she spends the money her parents set aside for her wedding to open a cat cafe in Louisville, Kentucky. Can't wait for that one. More winging it next. Okay, we ended on a TV show. No one uh, in their right mind is, or even in their off mind, is going to check out Call Me Cat on Fox coming to, uh, uh, you know, TVs that still utilize a dial to change the channel uh, this winter. 
Speaking of TV shows that are awesome, though, um, and again, we'll keep this short because it's, you know, people haven't seen it. And even if you uh, want to see it, we're not trying to spoil anything. Have either of you guys seen Mr. Robot? This is a uh, show that, so do you guys know Rami Malek? He was in, uh, what was it, Bohemian Rhapsody or The Queen, The Queen uh, movie? Oh, like the the main character? Yeah, like he, he played. played uh, Freddie Mercury. Yes, correct. Okay, yeah. This is where he he's had like, uh, God, Jack Bauer, 24. He had like a minor role one season in 24. But Mr. Robot, it was on USA, which is, you know, you know th- there's not the greatest shows there. This is one of the craziest shows I've ever seen. It's fantastic. It is artful. It is suspenseful. It, it's incredible. Well acted. He's the star. Um, have you guys heard of this? I think I've heard of it. Is it a newer show? It, it was like 2016 to 2018 or 19 or something. Um, I watched the first season with Drew, and um, it's like pretty good. Nuts! <laughs> You start to lose it. I mean, and then what? He's basically trying to get rid of the internet with like Bro. basically. All right, yes. I shouldn't say too much, but sure. Um, he's a, he is a good actor, and you know the guy casting for Boh- Bohemian Rhapsody saw Mr. Robot and was like, "I want him." And Dude, it was like him. it's a great show. Like it, yeah, it, it's like it's a great cast. Everyone's well acted. It's like the psycho kind of thriller. Like, dude, it'll trip you out. Brennan, you're saying you're getting into TV shows. I recommend it. I recommended The Boys to Austin. Did you catch up? Uh, I'm like halfway there. So I kind of forgot about it. You got to watch that too, Brennan. Uh, someone put here too, you watched The Night Stalker. So this is new. This is something you guys watched it. I want to watch it. Are you going to tell me not to? What's your review? We just binged all of it today. Was it sick? It was... It was kind of creepy. Like I, I wouldn't want to watch. People it. haven't heard of it. Give us the basics. I mean, basically, it's just the story of a serial killer. Um, I think it took place in like the mid nineteen eighties in Los Angeles, and it's just following these two homicide detectives, basically, uh, as they recap their story of them trying to catch this serial killer and it kind of goes into the gruesome detail of you know how he committed his murders and things like that it's really eerie on netflix right what was this guy's name i think i maybe have heard the story on a podcast did he have like a catchy serial killer name or maybe i mean it was the night Night stalker is what they called (laughs) oh the title okay uh yeah maybe i'm off on that austin it's it's super eerie. Like Brennan said, I wouldn't watch it alone or even right before you go to bed. But this dude like killed so many people. I think he had like almost fifty um, charges against him, and they think that they could they didn't even find half of that them. That they know of, right? He was super satanic, and it's just crazy how many kills you can get away with, especially back then. Caught. I'm yeah. like. The dude was, like, doing fucked up shit and, like, leaving, like, a decent amount of trace and, like, they just couldn't catch him. I'm like, why not? Have you guys seen – so is this, like, a documentary or is it fictionalized? Or, so no, it's, it's, a it's a documentary. So have or you heard part. of Mindhunter? This is fictionalized, and I think they just canceled it, but it is sick. It is about all – it's based on these, these FBI agents that went to interview and kind of psychologically trying to dis- – uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, but try and figure out what's going through the mind of these psychopath killers back in the seventies, eighties, nineties. Yeah. I've, I've definitely heard of it. It's, it's on Netflix. I believe yes. I've never oh, watched great. it. So yes. I, did they make a second season of it or did they, they have one and two. They're great. And I, I've been looking, I'm not sure if uh, they're going to pick up for another one. True detective, something similar, but that's obviously all fictionalized. Uh, and that's, probably the best mm. show i've ever seen in my life season one of that show is absolutely correct incredible. yeah that's yeah. what i'm linked to that's season like a different story true season one is like mcconaughey Bobby harrison uh just undefeated top Woody three Harrell shows yeah. top three shows ever made and then it's weird because every season's like a new story new characters anthropology yeah which i kind of like how do you guys feel about that there's certain uh shows that do that so yeah. american horror story does it too right yeah and I'm a, a lot of people don't like it, but I'm a big fan of Black Mirror on Netflix. Yeah, okay. 
which is like every single episode is completely different. It's not, I mean, they'll put out seasons, but none of it really ties together whatsoever. Um, I couldn't get into it, but yeah, I know that's hugely widely popular. You just got to find like the right episodes to watch. Like there's probably 10 of them that are like super interesting. Yeah. Black mirrors. I mean, dude, the way we watch TV has just completely changed. I'm all for it because it's, uh, again, it's either uh, we're checking out Call Me Cat Thursday nights at nine or we're binging our favorite shows on Netflix. Um, okay, so this kind of ties into, I guess, binging. How about All Nighters? You guys are, so this is based off Mr. Robot. Like the main character is just kind of like he's, he's crazy. He just casually pulls All Nighters without realizing it. I can't do that. And I don't think the normal person can, but college was the exception where i had this thing to where i i like doing homework right you know college or you know you experiment with uh taking adderall here if you got a big test coming up here big test coming up there um i loved taking like a low dose of adderall and just cranking out all of my homework sunday night like i would i just loved it again it's notorious i was into heaters two weeks on nicotine gum by the way it's going okay. Um, but yeah, back in college, it was like, uh, you know, just pulling all nighters, you and your buddy, uh, you're just cranking out work. You're going out every hour for a heater. Uh, what do you guys remember about all nighters? Did you pull those in college? Yeah, definitely. The, uh, so I was in the business school at Mizzou and pretty much every class you're in, you're kind of with the same group of people. So it, it's, it was nice just being able to like when you had homework or you had studying to do, you know, you had your specific part of the library that you like to go to and you would all grab your coffees and some snacks. Dude, the library Uh, was popping. Yeah. I would. Yeah. We do all nighters sometimes. They're mainly for like finals though. And like you'd have the final at like 9 a.m. And then you'd immediately go to bed right after. <laughs> but Brendan's right. You'd study with the same people in like the same spot for like two years, three years. It, it was a social movement. Yeah, it was like, uh, that, I mean, that's what I really feel. I've been maintaining this throughout the pandemic is just I feel so shitty for the people that don't get to experience the college experience. Um, just, you know, being in a frat or just experiencing being at a bar, even if you're not in a frat or a sorority. Uh, you said it, cramming, pulling all nighters for tests, study groups, trying to find that table for a study group, like waging wars in the library with other people trying to get a table. Dude, honestly, tests like are probably tough these days if you can't study with your friends, unless you can like find all the answers online these days. Yeah, I mean, like, I don't even, I would always panic about that. Like if you were, I was thinking about this the other day too, it's crazy how advancement uh advancement in technology has been because i remember like when we were going through elementary school it's like okay computer lab for 35 minutes now it's like okay kids pull out your teslas yeah uh, pull out your teslas pull out your ipads uh you know and they're three years old in kindergarten Literally. like it, it's crazy how technology has advanced and like what were our parents thinking we're we're coming home from the bus stop every day and we're like yeah i played on uh i play brick breaker on my pc computer today dude do you guys remember smart boards when those came out yes that's a that, great that was crazy example. i remember like revolutionized school and like elementary school for me and if you like did good on a test you got to play for 10 minutes on the smart board you could like draw stuff everyone loved the markers the markers yes and then i feel like some of the teachers were like super super good at the smart boards like they know all these tricks and then there were some (laughs) teachers that were like how the fuck do you turn this thing on (laughs) that's like your parent that's actually tech savvy and then my dad who still has the iphone two and a half um the old charger yeah exactly uh okay here we go two birds one stone i put this in there because i've been thinking about it for a couple weeks i've been wanting to put this in i deleted it a couple times sometimes i think i'm spider-man okay bear with me seriously i swear to god i sometimes fucking like almost have to do a double take just at myself and look in the mirror sometimes because whenever i am just doing something i have saved maybe 28 phones just from fumbling it having it drop 
like, you know, three feet to the ground and me just snag it out of midair, look around and nobody's there. And I'm just like, holy fucking shit. This happens to me probably twice every month. I kid you not. It's fucking crazy. Like, and speaking of the boys, I mean, it, it's, and then someone also, so two birds, one sp- stone, someone called me out, which this is a heady play because we have a strict homework assignment of three topics per week. Someone utilized their topic slot as, all right, be honest, who puts sometimes I think I'm Spider-Man, which is a heady play. What do you guys feel about that? Am I crazy? Am I lying? What's going on? I mean, if, if you're so good at catching your phone to the point that you think you're Spider-Man, <laughs> that, that's a pretty specific thing. Um, it's not just my phone. I mean, let me tell you. So it's it's other expensive gadgets. Other objects. Oh. It's just like like I'll literally be fumbling around objects in my hand. Something will fall out and all of a sudden before it even hits the ground. And it's been in front of people too. Like I'll just freaking backhand it out of the air and just kind of my eyes are already big anyway, but just eyes wide. Just like, <laughs> did you guys fucking, are we okay? I, I suck at that. I've broken so many phones from dropping them. So I guess... I, I don't have your spidey senses. Uh, Brecken was the so. one that put that. At first, when you put that, I thought you meant that. Um, you know when Spider Man like looks in the mirror and he's like absolutely jacked. Yeah, that's not me. That's Brendan. Like that. <laughs> but wait, Brendan. Speaking of dropping your phone, you should tell that story about you and your dad. Yeah, I was actually just gonna tell that. So in high school, I was at least by my parents notorious for constantly breaking my phone you want to um, dive into why or no i mean i would just drop it it would just crack like just like cracking my phone oh i thought um, it was something uh, at night that occurred that it was <laughs> no, unbeknownst to you okay that probably didn't occur till college but um that's a story for another day <laughs> anyways I, I would always crack my phone in high school from dropping it and uh, after one time, my parents drove me to the Sprint store to buy me another phone and I get the phone and we're on the way back to our house. And my dad's like, you know what, Brendan, I'm just going to give you the life, the life proof case off my phone right now. Cause I know you're going to break this other fucking phone. I just bought you. So he, he gives me the life proof case on the way home while he's driving. I put it on my phone. We get back to our house He pulls in the garage, gets out of his car. As he's getting out, his phone falls out of his pocket, hits the ground, and shatters. And it was an amazing feeling for me. I laughed (laughs) for probably about 30 minutes straight. My dad was so pissed. But it was just a great feeling after all the shit that he had given me for breaking phones. As soon as he gives me his case, his phone broke. Uh, That's something. I mean, it's crazy how life works like that sometimes. Did you hop right back in the car and go back to the Apple store? <laughs> uh, I don't even know what he did. Do they even still make life-proof cases? I feel like that's like fucking 2015. I don't think because phones are waterproof now, right? Exactly. Yeah. I yeah. Kelsey just got the fucking Apple watch that people are surfing in in commercials. Yeah um okay just a couple more here pretty solid episode here of winging it again brendan duarte austin platts i'm dylan corbett um yes your obligatory stock market update um all i've got here is one somebody put in bitcoin question mark and uh i currently have 33k in the market right now uh who wants to go first i'll let you so what what did you put the money in what did you invest in bro <laughs> this is a whole other podcast you want me to divest my portfolio well, but basically- let me ask you this let me ask you this sure. when when did you put the money in and again uh for the audience brendan's actually a financial like this is his background so i'm just a guy farting around on robin hood um so these are fair questions so basically in, in, we made a bunch of money off buying and selling a house in south dakota i'm waiting for the fuck i found the fucking house of my dreams on uh i think it was saturday it was sunday morning i am getting ready to call you know my realtor call the mortgage company it's sold it's sold in a day um so the market is just nuts right now but basically i made like 50k plus off this house and instead of just sitting it around i'm thinking how about i finesse this stock market which i got into in march i've been doing solid 
I get in and, uh, well, you know, I'm up 1.79%. How about that? that when good? did you get in? Uh, I mean, I went back in March. Okay, here we go. So I went back in March. I threw in and ended up pulling out up <laughs> a measly 0.28%. I pulled out right before the election because I uh-huh. panicked. I know, I know. I'm a clown. I get back in. I'm not fucking around. I'm throwing unis in there. I'm talking unis. Um, and now I've been using, like, I've gotten a little more savvy. Like, I'm, I'm checking RSI. I'm making sure to sell when I'm up, uh, not selling all of it, not getting all the way out, selling kind of 50% here when I think it's overpriced, um, et cetera. I mean, I, I finally got in DocuSign's putting my grandkids through college. Don't get me started on Fubo TV. Um, but I'm in Amazon now, Shopify. I just bought five grand at Google. Uh, don't get sued, please. Uh, you know, I'm all over the place. <laughs> me and Brennan just recently got into Bitcoin. We're in it for the long haul. Aaron convinced us. and he's So probably- how does that go? Because I, I have my mom has gotten into it and obviously she can buy, you know, a couple of bitcoins. But how does that work? Like, did you have to buy in for uh, like half of one? Because it's what at 34K now for one? On yeah, Robin, you, can, you can buy whatever specific dollar amount you want. So okay, you so you could like, even do like a tenth of a you bitcoin. You could buy 0. 0.01 of a bitcoin. Wow, okay. If you want to. Yeah. So it, it's really easy to buy into it. Um, I don't know. But, I, 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 I'll go ahead. No, keep going. You're good. I was going to say the, the reason I put this on the list is uh, just because I feel like people are just have really strong opinions about Bitcoin. Either they think it's going to fucking explode. And well, it's a phenomenon. Or it's just a complete, you know, hoax. It's not real money. Like, what is it? But hold on. It's uh, so I'll interject my own question, I guess. Uh, sorry about that. But it was uh, it's digital currency. What you think about it? What the hell is sitting in my bank account right now? Not just a number on a screen, you know, like what if that entire fucking thing crashes that, you know, like that's what's crazy to me. And I think that's the larger thing about Bitcoin is people are like, what is this? And I've been seeing something on stock talk stock TikTok, where people are buying digital properties of earth i saw yeah. that yeah Dude, okay so real quick the thing about bitcoin is that it's decentralized so like you don't need the government or anything to like like transfer your money to someone else you don't use banks it's it's like they say it's like the digital gold um and like i feel like, like a lot of people are just investing right now because the fear of missing out and, yes. you know, it's going to get to 100K and people don't want to miss out on it. Like, does it really do anything? No. But like, well, it it's has, like Tesla it's, before it skyrocketed. People wanted to get in on it. It's kind of like every right. boom. I mean, everyone, like the blockchain or whatever, everyone's checking everyone. So like, it's extremely safe, except for like, if you lose your pin code, you can never get your Bitcoin because it's not centralized. Like you, your bank can't just be like, oh yeah, let me just reset your password. That's topical. You know I mean? Touch on that. That was a big story this week. What? The, so the if, dude, if you have Bitcoin, you oh, have yeah. to have like a, a wallet to hold the Bitcoin. It's kind of confusing. I'm, I won't like get super into it, but you have to have a wallet to hold the Bitcoin, which is, it, it's a electronic wallet. It's all done online. And there's like, the big what? story was- there, What are we talking about? about? That's blowing my mind right there. The, there the, the big story this week was the, the guy has $250 million worth of Bitcoin, but he lost the password to get into his wallet. And the, if you have a wallet, it's not like a normal password from my understanding that you can just like, you know, use the same one as that you would use to sign into your email, but it's like a computer generated one. That's like 17 words long of just completely random words. So it's really hard to, you know, if you lose your password, it's not something you're probably going to remember. He doesn't have a security uh, question. What's my pet's name? Right. Yeah. Uh, there's nothing. My like pets that. go crazy. Wait, you said 17 words. You mean 17 characters? No, I think it oh. means words. I mean, I I would say it's it's I I would say it's more like 12. But um, no, a lot of wallets it is like words, uh, not characters. 
And the funny thing is, like, if you get it wrong so many times in a row, you get locked out. So the guy's got yeah. two guesses He's... left. <laughs> Imagine that. Is that the worst fucking feeling ever? Yeah, um, you're never going to guess the last time because then you have no hope left. Like, at least with one or two guesses, you have that hope, you know, even though you'll probably never get the Bitcoin. I think my dogs are channeling uh, to me that we should wrap this up. Uh, that's a shout out listener submission to Charlie Bischoff. Uh, enough Bitcoin for you. Um, okay, let's wrap this up again. Winging it. Uh, Brennan Duarte, Austin Platts. I'm Dylan Corbett. This is a good one. Favorite oven pizza? I just bashed a Jack Za. I will fucking back that till my grave. Uh, that's my favorite. Red Baron and honorable mention. Tombstone. Those are my top three. Do you guys have preference? I like Jack's a lot too. I will Simple, say I've always cheap. thought, yeah, I've always thought that the Giorno's is overrated. Totally, you're going like, for crust I'll, there. I was just I'm gonna just, say the Giorno's. It's like really all I get. <laughs> Jesus Christ, boo! Yeah, it's not delivery. Uh, you guys ever had home run pizza? I oh not. yeah, that's good too. Is that a chain or? I I think so. Yeah. I miss, uh, I've never heard of that. I miss Fortells. That's not a chain, but that was uh, a St. Louis staple. That, that's, a, that's, geez. I mean, I have too many uh, top pizzas. Pizza is such a great thing you can mess up, yeah. uh, you can mess around with, but. I don't, I, wish you, I don't really eat a lot of frozen. Austin and Drew eat a lot of frozen pizza. So I'm, I'm interested to hear Austin's top three. Well, we kind of weaned off it, but we'd literally just eat DiGiorno's <laughs> and home run. What well, I was MCA say, personal trainers don't allow that. <laughs> I wish we could see like Dave Portnoy's top like hundred or like all of them and see like which one the has them ranked. Yeah, has, in the he has, a, he has like a full app of that. I'm pretty yeah. sure. Um, you can just go to the ranking. Yeah, like and they have a ranking. Like you can literally be in a city and it's geographed to where you could see pizza places in their ranking if he's been there. Yeah, he really cornered that market. He has his like uh, oven baked, like frozen pizzas ranked too as well. Yeah, because he did that during the pandemic. Exactly. He, yeah. Yeah, I was, uh, I mean, he shat on Jack's just because he had the bone to pick with them because they yeah. wouldn't like send it to him for free. I was like, bro, <laughs> Jack's is gas. Um. All right, that's a solid episode there. It just fl- flew by. We didn't have a guest this week. I think it's still great that you guys enjoy it. Uh, hit subscribe wherever you enjoy your podcast. Uh, websites coming up this week that uh, has been promised for a week and a half. Yes. You know how I work. Uh, it is in production. Correct. But I actually do have some time this week. Uh, and that should be done by the end of this calendar week. McGregor fight this weekend. My God, what a fucking week. Are you guys jacked about that? I'm having people over. I, it's uh, I McGregor. That. Yeah. yeah McGregor now. Poirier too. <laughs> I had no clue. I thought he was, didn't he retire like four times? Dude, he hasn't fought in two years. Uh, yeah, he's a, he's a kind of a clown where he's a retiring, but everyone comes back. Dude, uh, Khabib just retired. Dana White just went to see him. He's going to come back. Everyone has a price tag, but, uh, shit, dude, this fight's going to be epic. It's just being a absolutely. Fight. I'm pumped for it. I, I love UFC fights. <laughs> oh, dude. That's like my new favorite sport. The, that's the one thing I learned from the pandemic. Are we taking McGregor? Dude, he's such a big favorite. He's like three to one. He Isn't knocked- the Floyd Mayweather, Jake Paul, or Logan Paul, like, uh-huh. it's like 25 to 1 or something. Speaking of Barstool, did you see uh, Jose Canseco is fighting Billy Football? That's so fucking funny. And then Jose Canseco said he wants Logan Paul after. It's all a fucking money grab. This is all – Logan Paul is 0-1-1 and as a boxer, and everyone, their mother, is going to buy to buy pay-per-view to see him get smoked by the best boxer ever in the world. Also, doing? how about Jose calling out his next fight before he even fights in the first one? How, how about Alex Cooper uh, setting out Jose Canseco on Twitter for him being in our DMs? You guys see that? <laughs> what what do you say to her? He he. Tw- so Jose Canseco tweeted like Barstool's washed. No one wants to. No one wants to associate with Barstool anymore or something. So Alex Cooper tweeted a screenshot of him DMing her. And he was like, hey, what's your number? If you let me text you, I'll come on your show or something. 
<laughs> Jesus so Christ. Great. Well, wait, speaking of Barstool, um, because she is like, and I've heard Dave talk about this Dave Portnoy. I didn't mean to sound like we're on a first name basis. Um, but it's literally like he's talking about how her brand is so big and it's a contract year for her. Is she gonna walk? Because I mean, Barstool grew her, she grew, you know, Barstool. It was a very symbiotic relationship, but that's going to be a hefty price tag for Barstool. And maybe they could pay that. I mean, that's a big company. Dude, they tried buying the Bills Stadium. Like, they can afford it. I, yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. Also, fuck Sophia. If you're listening, Sophia. No, I'm yeah. <laughs> well, isn't is she? She's I know nuts. she came out with a podcast, but isn't that like a dud? Sophia with an F. And yeah. Sophia with an F. Who, who spells her name Sophia with an F? She, like, faked her. She was, like um fake their top seven you know how you get ranked at the end of the year like what you were in comedy podcast, podcast ranked in she, like, or faked yeah. it. she like took someone else's and faked it i've never listened is it the same premise as call her daddy or too. what i i i remember it opened like because everyone wanted to see what she wanted to say and now it's not even kiss the fucking rankings you know yeah Fuck. um get us to the rankings this is winging it uh, Dylan Corbett on your favorite podcast. This is Wing. It comes out every single Tuesday uh, on the website. You're going to be able to see episodes in order. So if you have to catch up, uh, you can do so rather easily on all your favorite platforms. Brennan Duarte, Austin Platts. I'm Dylan Corbett posting on a Tuesday. Enjoy your week. That McGregor fight coming up. That's on Saturday. Enjoy your week. We'll talk to you on Tuesday. <laughs>